what is it telling us? Q of x is equal to 2x squared times f of x over g of x. Oh my god, what's going on here? What do you think we're going to have to do here? Quotient rule? Mm, it's not something divided by something. It's something times something else. But within there, there's quotient rule, right? Ooh, how fun. That's what I've been waiting for all this year. So ultimately for this one, we have to do the product rule, but somewhere within there, we're going to get the derivative of the second. And when we want the derivative of this guy, we're going to have to do quotient rule for him. You ready? Let's do it. Q prime of x. Here we go. Product rule says derivative of the first. What is it? 4x Four. Four times the second. Oh, that was easy. Can't make it like a big. Then is it plus or minus? Plus. plus. The first, 2x squared times derivative of the second. So how do I get the derivative of this guy? Quotient rule. Low. D high. Minus high D low over low squared. I know it's not that bad. It would be worse if they weren't functions, if they were actual expressions and you had to work it out, right? You're just working with the name of the function. Yeah. Is this already the derivative? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah, it is. Can I evaluate it? What are we trying to find? Q prime at 2. Orale, replace everything with 2's. So 4 times 2 times f of 2 over g of 2 plus 2 times 2 squared times g of 2 f prime of 2 minus f of 2 g prime of 2 all over g of 2 squared. Square. What are we looking at? All the values that are where? 2. Are at 2, right? We're going to need f, g, f prime, and g prime at one point or another. But we're looking at these values because they're where the 2 is. Ready? Yeah. Yes. Let's do it, man. Jenny. Wait. Wait. No more space. No more space? No. It's a lot of space. Let's come up here. What's 4 times 2? 8 times f of 2 divided by g of 2. What's f of 2? 2. 2. two. g of 2? Negative 1. So 2 over negative 1? Negative 2. Can I just write it like that or I'll lose you? No. Plus. 2 squared? 4. 4 times 2? 8. 8 times. We've got to figure out what this big number is in here. You ready? Yes. Alright, so let's see. G of 2. Mr. Science. What? Negative 1. Negative 1 times F prime of 2. 9 minus F of 2. 2 times G prime of 2. Negative 1 all over g of 2, which was negative 1 squared. Alright. What's 1 times negative 9? Negative 9. Negative, nine. negative 2 times negative 1? Positive 2. Positive 2, so negative 9 plus 2? Negative 7. So all of this right here. Is negative 7 because it's negative 7 over 1, right? Yeah. So negative 7 times 8? Negative 56? Yes. And this is negative what? 16? So that's a total of negative 72? Yeah? So what does that tell me about Q of X at 2? Q of X is? Decrease.
BC? Because Q prime of X is less than zero. One more? One more? Why not, right? We're already here? Let's finish it. Alright, what does it say? Find the equation of the line tangent to this graph at 3. What do we need? My point and my, my slope. So let's do it. What's the point? 3 comma what? Plug in what? Plug it into this function here. So that's 3 times 3 over G of 3. So that's going to give me 9 over, what's G of 3 if you go to the top? Negative 3, so that ends up giving me negative 3. Good? Second thing we need is the slope of the tangent. In order to get that, we need to know the derivative. So what's the derivative of V? Ocean rule. Low. D high. Minus high. D low. Over low. Where? Easy? What are we substituting? What are we going to plug in here? 3? So we want g of 3 times 3 minus 3 times 3 times g prime of 3 all over g of 3 squared. What's the g of 3? Negative 3. Right? Mm -hmm. What's the g prime at 3? 6. Six. Okay, so let's do it. Negative 3 times 3? Mm -hmm. Negative 9. 3 times 3? 9 times 6, 54, minus 54, negative 3 squared, at the bottom, 9, right? So that gives me negative 63 divided by 9, is negative 7, alright, are we done? No, we need the equation. Let's finish it. Y plus 3 equals times beautiful that's my equation out of time ah, what are we get the garden stuff got it? so you can apply the quotient rule no matter how it's presented whether it's presented using graphs whether it's presented using tables whether it's presented using the equations you got to be able to attack it from all angles okay Sounds good? All right, let's look at your homework and see if you have any questions or any of them that you would like for me to help you with and go over together. Were there any that gave you some trouble there? Those of you that looked at your homework this week. Ask No? I gotta let you try them first so that you can figure out you don't know how to do them. Yes. Can you ask questions tomorrow? Sure. You want to try one together? Yeah. Yeah? Let's try 11 together. Because that one was a lot of fun. So they want you to show that the derivative of that function is equal to this. Okay? And if you notice it, do we have to do any like quotient rule or product rule for them? Mm. No, right? It's just one function minus another function. So it's just the derivative of each one. So let's do it. What's f prime of theta? What's the derivative of cosecant theta? Mm. Negative cosecant, mm. cotangent, but there's already a negative there, so it becomes what? Cosecant, cotangent, right? Minus, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. That was easy. That is the derivative, right? The problem is that it doesn't what? 
doesn't look like that one, right? So they want me to make it look like that one and show the steps to get it to look like that. So how can I do that? We're going to have to use our identities, okay? Some of our identities that we need to know. What do you think we should do? Change everything to cosine and sine? Yeah. All right, let's try it. So what's cosecant the same thing as? So this is 1 over sine theta, okay, times? Cosine over sine, okay, minus cosine theta. All right, so what does that become? That becomes cosine over what? Sine squared theta, sine squared theta mm -hmm. minus cosine theta. Mm -hmm. Okay. And up. Man, if only this was cosine squared over sine squared, then it would be cotangent squared. But it's not. What would I have to do? Take out a cosine, combine them, get a common denominator. We could take out a cosine. I guess we could do it both ways. Let's do it this way first. So combine them so the common denominator would be what? So I need to multiply the top and the bottom by sine squared, right? So that gives me what? Cosine theta minus cosine theta sine squared theta all over sine squared theta. Okay. And now? Now you want me to take out the cosine? So now I have cosine theta times 1 minus sine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay. One minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine. One minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. Okay. So then this goes to cosine theta times cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. Okay. This over this gives me what? Cotangent squared theta times cosecant theta. I mean, cosine theta. I don't know why I said cosecant theta. Good? So did you make it match with what was up there? Yeah. Yeah. You could have taken out a cosine here, and then that would have given you cosine theta times 1 over sine squared, which is Secant squared theta, right? Minus what? Minus 1, which is also an identity which is equal to cotangent squared theta. We could have stopped right there. Yeah? So remember that we have sine squared theta, right? Plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So if you're trying to get secant squared theta, secant squared is 1 over what? 1 over cosine squared? So what you could do is divide by cosine squared. Right? So it gives me the sine squared over the cosine squared, which is? What did I do wrong? <laughs> Oh, I wrote this wrong? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what we would end up with, right? Because it's one over sine. I'm sorry. So this is cosecant. So if we want 1 over cosecant, then I have to divide by sine. There we go. Yes? 
gives me 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. So we can put all of this in place of that, right? This is cosecant squared, right? And then the 1 and the 1 cancel out, so you're left with the cotangent. Yeah? Sort of? I don't know. This is an easier way for most kids to pick it up on because they don't remember those. They remember the sine squared plus cosine squared. Even. That's a good one. What am I going to have to use for 12? Do I have to use quotient rule for that one? Or do I just use product rule? Product rule. Okay. You know the derivative of tangent and sine, so I would suggest you use the product rule. Cool? There was another one that was fun. I think number seven. Number seven is fun also. Good? Alright, so give it a try. See what you can do. And then we'll talk about it tomorrow or Wednesday.